Hi, I'm Ellie from The Dark Imp, helping parents reclaim family time by playing board games together. Now, one of the questions I'm often asked is, which game would you recommend for me and my family? And that's quite a hard question to answer because I might not know your family very well or at all. And certainly I'm not going to know your family as well as you know them. But I can tell you which games work best for different sorts of families and situations and people. So let's dive in. This is, these are the placemat games, Beach Life. And on the back of each sheet is another game called Castaway. And, oh. There, you can't see the title. There you go, Castaway. Um, so these are roll and write games. So you roll dice and you write on your own score sheet. And everybody has their own score sheet. And I'm going to also talk to you about Mini Town. Mini Town is also, so this is similar. You roll dice, everybody has their own score sheet, and you write on your own score sheet. So these two games work in the same sort of way. Well, these three games, because there's two on the big placemat games. And then there's Mini Town. Don't forget, you can get Mini Town for free, the, the print and play version, when you join our mailing list. Um, it's the same game printed out, but you if you want uh, your own copy sort of as a as a as a physical game, then you can you can buy it in the shop as well. So these three games all work in the same sort of way. You have your own score sheet. Play is simultaneous. So somebody rolls the dice and you can rotate that each turn. And then everybody uses those dice rolls on their own sheet to do all sorts of different kinds of things. In mini town, you're building your own town. In beach life, you're helping various different beach animals. And in Castaway, you are trying to, uh, you're stranded on a desert island and you're trying to either become self-sustained or you're trying to be rescued. And um, each of these games work in a similar way. As I said, you roll the dice and you decide what to do on your own paper. There's no interaction between the players. Everybody's using the same dice rolls. These are really good games for families where there's some problem with conflict at the table. If you find that your family argues every time you bring a game to the table and any kind of in-game conflict spills over into arguments between players, this might be a good one for you because there is no player interaction. Everybody's dealing with their own sheet and, uh, and they have complete agency over what they're doing. Nobody can mess with you. The other really good thing about these games is that play is simultaneous. So you're rolling the dice and everyone's playing at the same time. There's no sitting around. So if you have someone who in your family who, who struggles to um, wait in between turns, who gets frustrated, and that's not necessarily a child, it might be another adult in the family, it's certainly anyone with attention um, deficit disorders or anything like that, uh, just a lack of patience even can really... Uh, make some game playing situations really difficult but these games everyone plays at the same time there are no turns everybody plays each time so that's really helpful for families where there's just you know this tension around downtime the downside so if it, you may not you may want to avoid these games if you really hate adding up scores because all three of these games you're going to get scores in different ways and at the end you're going to add them up so in mini town there's uh, six different there's six different ways you can um, you can get scores and you're going to look at each thing in turn look at it on the on your town and you're going to add up those scores similarly with the uh, with beach life and with castaway there are um there are different things that you can that you can get scores for Diff five different games you're going to you're going to work out what you've got in each game you're going to add up the scores you're going to take you're going to add some bonuses take off some penalties and the same with castaway uh, so if that really puts you off playing a game like ah at the end i've got to do this adding up then that might not be the game for you okay so let's look at one of our big box games Gnome Grown. Now, Gnome Grown is uh, sort of a progression from those games we've just talked about. That everybody has their own garden, their own garden board that they're working on. Uh, and you're creating your own garden by, you know, putting different ground tiles in. So you might be making vegetable patches or flower gardens. Um, 
or ponds and you're adding features like bird baths and benches and fountains and you're attracting birds like ducks and owls and rabbits and those and you have certain things that you're trying to do in your garden in certain areas of your garden you have these objectives that will give you points at the end of the game now when you have put things in your garden on your own little board in front of you nobody can mess with that board people can't take the stuff away but this game has more player interaction because you are bidding for turn order and the turns are quick so you don't have to sit around. I mean all the games I don't have any games where there's long turns because nobody really likes waiting for a long time uh, the turns are quick and you have to bid for turn order so you're going to bid with ladybirds and the person who has bid the highest amount of ladybirds uh, they get to be first player that turn and the person who is first player has uh, the first choice over the actions they take. You may be prevented from doing something you want to do by somebody else taking that action, but you are almost entirely focusing on what you're doing rather than what other people are doing. So that's quite a nice progression from these other games, which are pretty much multiplayer solitaire games where everybody's playing on their own sheet all the time and there's no interaction. This one certainly has interaction. Um, so this is a good, a good next step. It's really good for thinking about how, how your own decisions uh, are going to affect other people. And it's good for thinking how other people's decisions and what they might choose to do on their time, turn might affect your own play. So it really gives you some th things to start thinking about. Well, who's going to choose to do that before me? And will I be able to do what I want to do? How can I make sure I get this? You know, maybe I need to just bid for turn order next time. How can I get enough ladybirds to do that this time so that I get to pick first next time? So it's all that sort of light strategy thinking going on. And so there's light interaction between the players. It's not so good for families with limited time to learn, to set up the game and to play the game. The game plays in 45 to 60 minutes. It's a heavy box. It's got lots of things in. The first time you play it, well, before you play it the first time, you're going to need to learn it. And of course, like all of the games, we have how to play videos, but this will take you a little bit longer than some of the other games to learn. And uh, and it needs time to set up. It's quite a lot of different tiles that need setting up in different ways. The flip side of that is, of course, that it looks beautiful on the table. There's a gorgeous miniature little gnome in it. There's beautiful artwork. And you create this garden out of all these beautiful things that at the end, you know, you sit back and take a photo of and it looks very pretty. The next game is Donut Dash. Donut Dash is great if you want a game that you can just lose yourself in a bit of a silly theme and have a load of fun. It's educational as well, like all the games are, uh, but you'll probably not even think about the educational side of things as you're playing. It's a light programming game where you are controlling two thieves that are uh, in a donut factory. And there's the movement around the, the, the tiles, around the board is quite funny. You know, you go off the top and you come in the bottom, you go off the side and you come in the other side. You keep moving in a certain direction, in the direction you've selected until you hit something, either another thief or a donut. You're picking up donuts and you're stacking them up in front of you. You can go through teleports and off bouncing sort of mirror walls and go back in the other direction. You can zoom all over the place during this game. And that's quite fun. You are picking up different donuts that are worth different amounts of points and stacking them in front of you. Your donut thieves are trying to get the highest scoring donuts. So at the end of the game, you have more donuts than everybody else. So it's really great for getting lost in a silly theme that everyone's having fun. Everybody's enjoying themselves. Um, again, with this game, you simultaneously you select the card which shows the direction that both of your thieves are going to go in and that so that's something you do at the same time that's the thinking bit of what am I going to do so when you're thinking everybody else is thinking at the same time and you're all doing that at the same time then when you execute your action there are all sorts of things that happen uh, and that's quite quick. You're executing your action. You're moving your uh, your your guys. You you as a passive player might get 
donuts from other people you might get sugar rush cards things might happen to you things might people might steal your donuts so there's quite a lot it's quite fast paced there's quite a lot of things that happen this game is not good for families where people really cannot handle someone stealing something from them you're going to have a stack of donuts in front of you and it's quite possible that it likely that somebody's going to steal one or some of your donuts at some point and if that's going to really upset a member of your family if there's someone in your family that can't cope with that or you don't think they'll be able to cope with that then this is perhaps one to avoid until you've had more uh, uh just practice really at playing games at failing uh, because that's one of the great things that games give us practice at failing and just just gentle um gentle practice at, at having things taken from you and actually this game is really good for that you know if you're just trying to if you're just trying to, if you think your child who hasn't been able to cope with it before might be able to cope with that sort of um having something pinched from them because of the theme because of the lightness of the game then this is a good one to start with that's donut dash this next game is top cake and in fact, this might be a good one to use as a practice for going up to Donut Dash, having things pinched from you, because actually nobody pinches anything from anybody in this game in Top Cake. Once you've got your cakes, which you're trying to win in front of you, they're yours. But there's some quite intense battle to win the cakes in the first place. So you might be going all in on trying to win a cake, a particular layer of cake, and someone else might just snatch it from under your feet. So, but, but again, but, but once you've got them in front of you, they are yours. Nobody can take them from you. So that might be a good one to play before you get to Donut Dash, before things are taken from your pile that's in front of you. Again, this is a nice light theme. Uh, you're trying to win different layers of cake to put in a stack of cakes that's going to get as high as you can uh, to get as many points as possible. And if you're lucky, you're going to be able to try and win a topper to put on the top, which could double the value of your entire cake. It's really good if you are, if you enjoy as a family trying to work out what everybody else is going to do, trying to read people's minds, because in this game you have bidding cards. You're going to bid for layers of cake. You're going to put one bidding card face up and one face down next to different layers of cake each turn. And so you have some information about what people have chosen to do. You can see which cakes they're bidding on. You can't see all the information about how much they have put down against each cake. So you're trying to work it out. And what they've put down is going to affect what you've put down. Because uh, if you put down a bidding card of three and they put down a three as well, both of those cancel each other out. And in fact, those bids just go away. Any duplicated cards removed. So you could also reverse it. So the one with the lowest bid is going to win the cake. And you've got a snatch card, which you play once during the game, which means that you're going to snatch that uh, cake and nobody else will get it. As long as nobody else has played their snatch card on the same cake, because then those cards are just taken out. So this, when you're playing this game, you're really thinking, oh, gosh, I wonder what they've done. I think he might have done that. So if you as a family enjoy that sort of, hmm, well, I think I know what you've done because I know how you operate, then that's this is a really good game for you. It's possibly best to avoid this game if you're a family where winning really matters. To you know, if, if you've got a child that can't, or, or an adult that can't cope with losing, uh, this might not be a great one for you because, as I said, it's, you know, you're trying to read each other's minds. You're trying to work out what they've done. There's some elements of bluffing going on, but it's not in your control whether you're going to win a card because you you never know exactly what other people have done. So not only, you know, I I understand that lots of people have problem with, you know, not being able to cope with losing games, but this game you might experience that multiple times during the game because you're trying to win certain cakes. And if you feel like you're losing multiple, like if you're losing the cakes, if you're not winning the cakes, you may feel like you're losing uh, more often during the game. So if you think on the flip side, of course, this might be a really good game to teach 
young children if you can keep the tone light to keep to teach children that winning doesn't really matter that it's just fun i mean this is a sort of fun uh ooh, let's stack cakes upon each other game so it's designed to do that to give you practice of losing but if you think that this is going to be a real problem for someone in your family and they can't cope with it yet then that's maybe one to avoid okay so this is don't count your chickens in Don't Count Your Chickens, you're going to develop your flock of chickens, turkeys and roosters. And you don't know which are more valuable, the chickens, the turkeys or the roosters. And in each game, it's going to change. At the beginning of each game, you're going to select different cards, which are and you're not going to look at them. Uh, so they're going to be hidden. And during the game, you can look at those cards. And those cards are what determine the value of each of the different kinds of animals. During the game, you're developing your flock, but you're also balancing that with looking at information. So to try and discover which of the birds are more valuable. Now, this is a really good game for families who like a bit of a thinky challenge. It's quite puzzly. There's quite a lot to think about. There's a little bit of maths to do in your head. It's not a great game for first time board gamers because there is quite a lot to think about. I mean, I know it's in a small box. It's one of the tin games. It's a, it's that you can take it on holiday with you. Uh, but it's actually quite a big game for a small box. That doesn't mean it takes a long time. It takes between 20 and 30 minutes. But when it's all out on the table, you're going to be thinking. So if you prefer something lighter, it would be a good idea to look at one of the other games. But this is a great one if you want to get those brain cells working. Then we've got the cracker games. Now, the cracker games, probably you're only going to play them at Christmas. Um, and in the cracker game box, there are six diff there are rules to six different games using the components. So the same components are used in six different ways in six different games within the box. So you have an advantage there that you're going to find a game that's good for any good for anyone. And that's that's one of the really nice things about this these cracker games is that there's certainly going to be a game that you as a family can can enjoy and play. They are all light really light games they're going you know they're designed to play at christmas at the christmas table so you might want to avoid this if your family really really enjoys those heavier games those games where you've got to think and make lots of strategic decisions this is not designed to do that these are designed these six games are designed to be quick and light and fun and to kind of hook people into board gaming to get them interested in sitting around the table and playing together and to introduce some mechanics that you might find in other board games but in a light accessible and easy to digest way so the rules are short it's a really good game for families who haven't, who haven't played loads of games before because you're going to be able to uh, access the rules in a very quick and easy way and get, get learn quickly and get playing quickly there's the additional bonus that what you have here is a little kit that you can design your own games with. And in fact, we've got a little design booklet which gives you challenges, 25 different challenges for you to create your own games using the components in the Cracker Box. And um, we're going to be making everybody's games available uh, on our website. So if you if you make a game, you can submit it to us and then other people can play those games. So it's there's six games in the book. It's a bit like a pack of cards. You know, if you make your own games with a pack of cards, you make your own games with the components in the cracker box. And there's potentially thousands of different games you could play with them. So that's the cracker games. And finally, we have the coaster games. Now, again, there are six different games in here. They're all games on individual coasters. And because there are six different games, you're going to find a game that works for you. Um, that's the advantage of them. They are super light, super, super, I mean, light, physically light. They are, you know, you can slip this in your handbag or your backpack or your... Um, uh, Clark car glove compartment you can take it wherever you can put it in your pocket take it wherever you want and draw it out and play it these are great for families who haven't played lots of games because as you can see the rules are very short and um, accessible so if you if you are worried about reading big rules these are good for you because you can just get stuck in get learn quickly get playing quickly
And another really good thing about these games is that if you haven't yet played many games as a family, you can get these six games cheaply and play them. And then you can ask different members of your family which ones they liked and why, and which ones they didn't like so much and why. And that will give you information about the kinds of games that appeal to the different members of your family without buying a huge big game, which you know could be expensive and which you might feel bad if it doesn't get to the table as often as you want it to. So this is a really good way of discovering for yourself what kinds of games are going to suit your family best. <laughs>